another episode of Voices of Uniqueness. We had the delight to receive Melanie Halper. She is a quadrite. She's a 5-1 splenic projector under the cross of wishes. Melanie also has a background on holistic health and she talked to us about her encounter with human design. We also had the beautiful opportunity to hear from her deep pearls of wisdom on the integration of the knowledge and, and her on her own path. This is why we call this episode Ironies and Initiations. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for listening. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome, Melanie Helper, to Voices of Uniqueness. Thank you so much for being here, for saying yes to this invitation. It's always special when it's a projector. I try to I do my best to try to put the invitation in a way that is you know, natural for you to respond to really find if it's, this is correct or not for you. So welcome to this space. And yeah, uh, maybe we can start just by asking you to introduce yourself to the audience. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It is a true honor and the irony, which is the theme of the day because the sun is in gate 30, line five, my absolute favorite line of the entire, entire, entire mandala wheel. Um, yeah, the best things happen when I'm just looking the other way. So it was super <laughs> unexpected to find your invitation and it lit me up. And yeah, so it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Quick introduction. Yeah. <laughs> So, so for those who don't know me, I am a 5-1 splenic projector. I'm a quad right on the left angle cross of wishes. And my background is in the field of holistic health. So it's been over 20 years now. I don't know exactly. Uh, 2001 really is when I got into the field. And I've had my own practice doing healing work, uh, primarily through the lens of body talk since 2008. So it's about 15 years now since I've had my private practice. And I mean, what can I say? Human design has just been the, the cherry on the cake because coming from a perspective of having such profound respect for individualized um, healthcare and I mean consciousness-based health healthcare what more what more how much more individualized can you get by adding in that information with that human design offers us so yeah so it's been a real journey and uh very fulfilled by the work that I do and it's just wonderful wonderful to meet you today yeah well, thank you so much yeah I get um, interested in in your work. I mean, I've been listening to your talks, your YouTube channel, and and I, I mean, I, I was like, you know, six line. We we like to look first and to you know from the perspective, we're like really looking and feeling and and. But then, what caused my attention completely was this um, this whole like, this holistic approach to health, and then how that interweaves with the perspective of human design about the body and the different expressions and the, the health realm, right? About the openness, the definition, the way the energy moves through our bodies. And then the body talk that was like, oh, that's my completely into my, <laughs> my arena. So I found um, that there's a lot of people that come from those uh, fields that feel attracted to human design. And I've been uh, seeing lately in the last years how much of like they are coming out with, yeah, I also have this other thing that I use <laughs> kind of more and more common. And so, yeah, that's that's why we are here. I was like, OK, now maybe try to extend the invitation, but it's completely uh, random that we are doing it today on a fifth line day for you a fifth one profile it was like wow i mean the the, the yeah it's well it's probably no casual <laughs> universe put us here 
Yeah. So, yeah. Would well, you like to talk a little bit more about how you blend the your, your knowledge that you have right now with human design with, with all your background in, in health? It all comes down to differentiation and it all comes down to these nuances that keep us unwell, really. And I've had my own painful journey of having very mysterious symptoms that no doctor could seem to figure out, that I felt alienated and outcasted and defective. I mean, one of the biggest, biggest blessings of human design has been to take all of these things that I once saw as defects and now realize that so many of them are actually my superpowers. Oh, so wow. there's just been this process in my life of, how do I say, not only really coming into a place of radical acceptance about myself, but also with each and every person that I meet. And even though people can come in with the same issue on the surface. Yeah. And while there may be similar themes going on underneath, we are each unique. There is no one size fits all. And mm -hmm. sometimes something that has plagued us our entire life, it's kind of like, I love using the, the analogy of the mechanic, because if you bring your car to a mechanic <laughs> and they light a stick of sage and they wave it over your car and there's, okay, everything's fine. No. <laughs> fix my car, fix my car. So that's what I love about this work because it's about getting under the hood. And sometimes there can be literally the smallest detail. And when you take your wrench and you just make that little adjustment or you just turn on the light, because so much of it, it's, it's all about awareness. I mean, we're not really doing anything. It's really like that pile of clothes on the child's the chair in the child's bedroom that they think is a monster, but then when the parent turns on the light and they see, look, it's just the clothes, you can't go, you can't unsee it at that point. Yes. You know that it's just the clothes. And so while, um, you know, there are things that run very deep and we can have a lot of wounding and we can have a lot of trauma, at the same time, there are tools to be able to navigate in ways that are actually really, really powerful. Yeah. And it can be humbling. It can be so humbling. There is um, this whole idea that being spiritual is being happy all the time and tr like transcending and, but so much of that is bypassing. And while, I mean, finding joy in our lives is absolutely important. I'm definitely not one for toxic positivity. I'm a, I'm a Scorpio and I'm all about getting deep into the shadow. It's like I'm able to not only with myself, but accompany others through some really, really heavy shit. Yeah. And I feel like it's like the most incredible shifts happen with the shattering that comes through becoming aware of these things that can be hidden from our awareness for so long. Yes, completely. Completely agree with you. Awareness is the key. And, and like I said before, some of the things that I felt were my greatest defects, it's fascinating because a lot of the time when we're, when we're coming from a distorted place, even our definition, what it is that makes us unique, it's like those things that are our very gifts end up imprisoning us. We become imprisoned by them because that's where we're meeting the resistance. So I started to see, for example, my not self persona, like one of the big, big aspects of my not self persona is being indispensable. And wow. I cannot say that I have eradicated this and it's not meant to be eradicated because it really is my superpower. However, it is all about wielding that energy in the right way. It's not about being indiscriminately like, indispensable to everybody at all times or doing things from that place in order to get the recognition, in order to chase that success that the mind thinks that I have to do something for. But of course, as a 5-1, with the definition that I have, in times of need, when in times of crisis, 
when I am recognized and invited and that person brings me in and it's correct for me, absolutely, absolutely, I'm that person. So each of us has that going on in our own designs where, where through our distortion, our very gifts end up imprisoning us. Wow. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Um, it's, it's tricky sometimes, right, to, go, to step outside of that, the other needing you uh, in that process and when is enough. Yeah, I absolutely hear what you're saying, but I've been very blessed in the sense that I really rarely attract individuals that are not, um, that latch onto me in that way. I don't tend to attract that. I mean, over the course of my practice, there have been people who have required for sure more attention and more care. But the thing that has been so obvious to me is that soon enough, if there is somebody who tries to interface with me too often, my, my impact, my effect on them is diluted. So it doesn't do them a service. It really doesn't. Yes. Mm -hmm. I won't, um, I won't ever put a, I've never been in a position to have to put a boundary with somebody, but it's something that I mean, put a boundary in the sense of saying to them, no, I will not see you if I need my help. It's very rare. I don't think I've ever turned anybody away, mm -hmm. but I see where my limitations lie. And I definitely see that whether it's somebody that I'm meeting for the first time, or if there is space between when I interface with people, that's when I end up having ah. the most, the most impact. I've been very, very fortunate this lifetime in being a 5-1 that I don't tend to, I don't tend to get nailed in the cross or to get, to, I mean, I have been nailed to the cross before, but it's not, I mean, there's some people that just have a really hard time with it. I know yes. people very closely that have had a really hard time with it. Um, there's so many factors that tie in, but what I will say is that my awareness of what it is and mm. what the dynamics are, how the mechanics operate has just been the most extraordinary thing because I navigate my life in a completely different way and I don't try to be who I'm not. I mean, I still catch myself doing that at times, but just having these tools to be able to autonomously come back into alignment. I don't need anybody. We don't, we do not need anybody outside of us to police us because mm. the second, like when you are calibrated to your signature. So for you as a generator to satisfaction, whenever you feel that frustration, you're like, Oh, so you don't need anybody saying you're not self, Julia, you're not self, you're not self. You know, you can, you yes. can, you can basically self-regulate. You can do it autonomously. You can get yourself back into alignment because at the end of the day, I mean, all we can do is be correct for ourselves. So would you like to share a little bit how was your encounter with human design? Do you remember how it was? Do you have any resemblance of how it was? It's actually very exciting that you're asking me about this because nobody, I don't think I've ever shared this story live publicly. And it, Wonderful. It, is, it is actually something that was quite, quite magical in so many ways. So I first encountered human design in 2010, but it was just a brief brushing up against it because I actually, everything was a little bit, I don't know if it's awkward to say backwards, but I actually ended up coming into human design through the gene keys instead of the other way around. Uh -huh. But at first, it's like human design was in the periphery. I kind of knew of it, but I wasn't very attracted to it. I wasn't really officially invited into it. I didn't even really know what it was to be a projector, but I was very interested in this whole spectrum of consciousness that mm -hmm. the gene keys offered the shadow, the gift, the essence. And, um, and it spoke to me in powerful ways. So I did a little bit of work with that. And then what with um, my son, my personality son being in the quarter of duality, <laughs> purpose fulfilled through bonding, bonding, uh -huh. my relationships are absolutely everything. And it was in 2017, December of 2017, I was really struggling to understand a dynamic between myself and I would say maybe 
the greatest teacher of my life. Hmm. And <laughs> all the irony, um, one of the gate 30 line fives in my life, talk about hitting a brick wall through the fates. And so oh, yep. I was just needing to understand and so I remember picking up the v Venus sequence, which is one of the gene key yes. sequences. I was like looking through the book. And then all of a sudden there was just this thing inside of me. I, I can't tell you how it, how it came upon me, but it was just this like inner prompting. You need to look at that human design thing again. It was like it, I knew on some level that I had to investigate something because there was something that I was missing, like a blind spot. Wow. So needless to say, I get on my computer, I go on my search engine, I pop in human design, I pop in my stuff, I pull up my chart, and then I start researching. And I go looking up projector. And then I was so, there was a part of me that was so distraught. And there was a part of me that was so relieved because everything started to make sense in terms of this dynamic that I was living and why it was so painful to me. And from that moment forward, I was just kind of really like pulled in almost stronger than, than an undertow. But what ended up happening was that I, I'm, I'm a total lone wolf. And as a 5-1, I'm really good with self-study, quad right, so I don't do well with traditional school. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did well in school, but it was just such a, ugh, such a terrible framework, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. so I was content but of course immediately I wanted to understand race psychology I wanted to understand <sighs> mind mapping like all of these advanced concepts and everybody was breadcrumbing me and I was so I was so bitter and so I happened to fall upon some amazing people and even though I didn't anticipate doing formal training I said you know what maybe it's time to get a foundation reading because you never know you never know so who did I choose? I chose Becky Markley, a fellow 5-1 splenic projector. And um, I mean, like talk about, you know, original gangster human design. Yes. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons, so I, I chose her for that, but also because she has the channel of initiation, which is one of Ra's channels, the 5125. And I will never forget this. And I kid you not, Julia, I think it was literally February 18th. So I've been like starting my experiment in December 2017. But finally, I book, I booked my, my foundation analysis. And it, I think it was right around this time. I think it was maybe the 23rd that I actually had my reading. But I remember I'm driving to my office, one of my offices one day, and I'm listening to Ra's course on the centers. <laughs> now, first of all, I just want to say I am actually from Ra's hometown, Montreal, Canada. Yeah. And there's just a lot culturally between us that even though he's a totally different type, he was almost like the like the uncle that I that I never had. Like we would have been total heretics together <laughs> just in terms of being like the black sheep of the family, all of that. So I'm listening to him and he's talking about the 5125 and I'm thinking about Becky. I'm thinking about having my reading the next day. And I get to the office and I open the door and right there in front of me, never seen this thing before. Didn't know how it got there was a massive, I'm talking like two or three foot wrought iron key, like just sitting there. Oh, and I had just been reading about Ra's whole thing in Ibiza and how for years he had been in a journal. He'd been drawing this key over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that ended up being the key to the Ruina in Ibiza when he got his. So I was just like, whoa. And I had shivers all through my body. I was, wow. I, it was like, you are being initiated. That's really <laughs> how I felt. So yeah, I had my foundation analysis the next day and it was just crazy because I had all, I didn't realize that I had all of these expectations of Becky that she <laughs> just didn't, it's not that the reading wasn't good or anything, but I thought, oh, you know, she's going to take pity on me on this projector and I don't have many resources. And, you know, she, she provided me with a couple of things, but I remember asking her, um, I was like, do you know? If, if it's possible to get a scholarship to study human design and she was like no I don't think so and so I was very discouraged and I was just like well I guess I'm gonna have to go at this alone 
And then I did, I continued self-study for a long time until one day things just happened where the path opened up. The path opened up for me to begin my formal education. And mm -hmm. I've been so blessed to be under Lavina's guidance, Lavina Archers. Yes, um, she's great. From like the last two years, it's been super tensive. I've done, I did living or design, ABCs, cartography, design guide training. Uh, and now I'm all the way in PTL three. So it's just been incredible. It really sounds like a, an initiation, a series of things, like a sequence of events that lead you to start like, yeah, diving deep. And also I'm interested in this, like, how do you like this transition from being, oh, I mean, I'm not going to go into formal education, which is what you said before. And now you're now going deep into it. Did you receive an invitation? Well, again, there's so much irony because I was, so I was in that same office. It was at the end of January, 2020 like just before all the COVID stuff started. And I was speaking with um, with one of my favorite people, a manifester. And I was just kind of lamenting a little bit about being a projector and how I, you know, hustling doesn't work for me. And she was, <laughs> she was very gracious and trying to give me all these tips. And then it's like, we always have this crazy stuff where we connect. We don't connect often, but when we do, it's like things just happen in my life. And so we hung up yes. the phone and I had a break and I remember looking at my phone and I had an email from promotional email from Jovian and I was about to hit delete. And then I just had this hunt, like keep scrolling. And so I scroll and then I see this ad in there for a projector's success secrets, living your design yes. by Lavina. And so I kind of witnessed Lavina over the years. I'd seen her kind of on YouTube and I was like, wow, this person has like a real hard on for human design. Yes. And I was like, her enthusiasm <laughs> was, was kind of like infectious. And I realized it like, is. wow, okay, there's, there are other people out there that are really passionate about this, but I don't know. It's just like at that time, it wasn't the right time, but I clicked on it and I, she was offering the first class free and I actually had made a prior commitment at the time. Uh, I was taking a body talk course at the time that was like quite, uh, like quite a, in terms of time and finances, quite a commitment. And anyways, so I really didn't know if I was going to be able to take the class, but everything, like, I, I, I can't even tell you just the synchronicity of how everything ended up unfolding for me to be in that class and then to be able to not only continue on this journey but it's like all of the the, the educational materials that I needed to literally get me to where I am today were mm. somehow all provided and this is a massive testament to all projectors out there because yes it's so true that it's like when we when we're not chasing it, it comes to us and we will always be supported. There's that quote yes. from Ra that's saying like about projectors that when we're not, when we're not chasing after it, it's like our lives will always be perfectly financed. So it's not about engineering the how or the what or the when, because the mind is always going to be obsessing about that. And it's really only when I let it go. And I really was like, just open that suddenly it literally it literally landed in my lap I was not looking for it at all hmm. that's a wonderful testimony from for project projectors and also uh like you said the materials the kind of education you needed the kind of input whatever it is visual or the right voice the right person to to for you to listen to and and get the transmission and have you had this experience while studying of things that like almost like a remembrance, like you already knew those things and suddenly they're just taking form in front of your eyes. And it's like, that's it. I've been looking for that term with art to articulate it in that way. Did you have that as a quad right? Yeah, it's unbelievable. First of all, something that I forgot to say before, because you were asking a question about like traditional education. So mm -hmm. it, it really is about finding the right, the right, it was about finding the right teacher for me. Oh, yes. 
And throughout all of my education with Lavina, I felt completely embraced uh, for who I am. And um, it, it, was, it was a real pleasure. But bringing in this piece, absolutely, not only, um, I mean, there's like crazy stuff that happens. I know that with human design, you don't really, there's like, it's not like Ra's there on the other side, watching, watching over us or whatever. <laughs> but there, uh, there have just been things that were way too uncanny, like way too uncanny to explain all the time. There's sometimes that I will be either thinking about something or talking about something with a friend. And then all of a sudden, whatever material, whatever resource I turn to for something, all of a sudden the answer is right in front of me. And actually, so a real case in point, this is a really interesting uh, story that still gives me goosebumps to this day. I was driving home one day. I remember exactly where I was on the highway and I had selected some random, random raw audio to listen to I think it was like colors and motivation or something and as I'm as I'm driving he starts talking about uh, people changing their name and and I'm listening I'm like oh, I'm like I wonder I wonder if Lavina's heard this and I start thinking about Lavina because she's somebody who has changed her name yes and so anyways I get home and it was summertime and I get home and I'm in the yard and I just opened Facebook. And at the time she was streaming her classes live. It was like a rave cartography class that I happened to just walk in on. Not that I was enrolled in, but that I had access to. And I kid you not, within literally three minutes of me watching this class, she starts talking about her name change. And she says, Ra talked about this in one of his courses, but for the life of me, I have no idea what it was. It was within the hour I had heard the exact audio that she was looking for. Yeah. So, and, and that's not an isolated incident. There have been many things like that where I'm suddenly just given, boom, the exact right information at the exact right time, whether it's information that I need for myself or that somebody else is coming to me for. Wow. <laughs> it's the magic of the quad right, right? Like things being pulling out of you, like in the right moment. If you are, I guess, if you are open, right? If you are really in that space of listening. And I've always been kind of the weirdo because <laughs> there are such random things that I will remember, that I will connect the dots between. So I, I really am that person that can not only spot details that another person might completely miss. And it's like, not just some random detail, but literally the crucial detail that then the big picture makes sense mm -hmm. so I've always I've always really identified with that but the one thing that I will say about understanding what it is to be quad right is that um, my awareness as to how deeply conditioned I am to be strategic it can be overwhelming at times it really can wow that's a big piece Wow. <laughs> and I feel like I sometimes have to even um, almost like like <laughs> fight to be right. People don't mean to, uh, the world doesn't mean to pressure me to be strategic, but it's like you can't escape it. So kind of like a either a, an emotional being who really needs to like set those boundaries with the people in their life that they, they can't make those spontaneous decisions they need yes. that time or even a reflector that needs to wait out a full lunar cycle with me I've had to have like a big boundary about uh being able to flow with things and not not being expected to, to engineer my entire life because that's really what it's about I have the most existential design ever and the more that I can just it's almost like having to just know inside of me that there is this really powerful safety net that is always there to catch me at all times. With my unconscious perfected form, life will never let me down if I can surrender to that. Yeah. Yeah, I know that energy. I also have that channel and, and it, it helped me sometimes to just remember that because it's true it's the pressure I, I can only imagine for you the pressure from the the conditioning in the world to be strategic like you say maybe you feel it even 
deeper. It all goes hand in hand because I find that in many ways it can go with the whole mind chasing the signature of success and and with even my my view, my distracted view, I'm a possibilities person. And what ends up happening is that I get entrenched in probability and then what I need to do about it so that I'm going to have a safe future. It's like, no, you're here to be on autopilot, Melanie. Like, really let go of the steering wheel. It's the hardest thing. It is the hardest mm. thing. I honestly don't know. It doesn't matter how many deconditioning cycles I go through. I don't know if I will ever truly live it 100%. I, I really don't. The shift we all experience with this whole pandemic thing in the perspective of our own, like our responsibility around our, like taking our health back into our own hands, right? Uh, would you like to share a little bit about, I know it's a huge theme, but whatever comes for you or whatever experience you would like to share. I just find it so hilarious. In true 5-1 manifester style, Ra dumps this information on our laps and then he dies. He just leaves. <laughs> yes. And he's like, here, you have what you need to survive. Like, go, you know, <laughs> just use this, try it out, experiment and see. And so as we approach this global cycle shift in 2027 and we see these structures breaking down, it's so easy to say, to look at the, um, to look at certain details, whether we're looking at certain aspects of COVID or the financial system or the healthcare system, but it's like all of these are, are, are symptoms of the greater um, truth, which is that the the coming cycle, the background frequency is no longer going to be supporting a lot of the things that this last cycle has, especially when it comes to um, these 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 structures that, that they just can't they just can't continue on on with us. So, what I find the most powerful as a concept is we've been so conditioned to outsource our authority, whether it's to institutions, whether it's to other people, yes. but at the end of the day, and it's a really huh, bitter pill to swallow for us projectors <laughs> anyways, uh, is that the, 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 the deepest outsourcing that we do is to our minds. It's not even to something that is outside of us, but it's something mm. that is, well, it seems to be, inside of us this 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 narrative this endless thing inside that keeps on trying to dictate our lives so um when we talk about sovereignty and when we talk about uh per, our personal authority inner authority it's it's all encompassing this is really really a, a massive opportunity not only to and it almost is ridiculous to say to take the power back into our own hands. Like we have control. And yes, <laughs> actually, Isa Silver, who's been one of your guests, uh, she's one of my favorite people to just like sit and laugh about this stuff because we could be all like, yeah, you know, we're using human design to take our power back. But it's even that is such a joke. It's it like, is. Yes, it's a cosmic joke. <laughs> you have to have the power. Cosmic and <laughs> it's yeah. not real power. Yeah. <laughs> and all I can really do is just flow with life. And through my own awareness, every time that I see myself just falling off that horse, get back on. It doesn't have to be graceful. Uh, oftentimes, it is very humbling. The, 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 they're like waves of shattering. I can get to a place yes. where I'm almost like, yeah, you know, like, this is amazing. I'm not doing this thing that I used to do anymore. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden something else comes up. It's like that game at the amusement park with the little gophers, the one pops its head up, you hit it over the head and it pops up somewhere else and you hit it over the head. So you have, but you have to have a sense of humor. Like that's the thing. And, and I understand that life is not always funny. It's really not, but that irony that is so inherent to the fifth line that is our I just feel that it yes. offers us this real possibility of um of like of embracing embracing that embracing our own shortcomings from a place of just yeah humility but also humor and um it's not it's not a journey for the faint of heart and yet it's really it's rewarding because, yeah yeah
But, you know, in a way, we all have been initiated, like in a way forced to really come back into our inner listening and go, well, should I do this or that? Should I, you know, like we have been facing during during this last two or three years, the, the need to make decisions for ourselves in a different way. So much like material for reflection, for consciousness to wake up about what is this? What is going on? Yeah. Um, a couple of the things that I find really fascinating, first of all, was to notice that soon after COVID, I, I'm, I don't remember the exact dates, but on a nodal level, the nodal environment was identical to post 9-11. So that was something that was really, really relevant to me. Mm -hmm. And if you think about Pluto that was transiting gate, gate 61, and, it, and it's like this this need to know, this need to, to figure things out and the rabbit holes and how polarized everybody was. Yes. And I would go through this experience where I'd be like so in it and finding myself getting pulled into the po polarization and then having to be right about this. And then it was just like, I can only be correct for myself. That's it. Mm -hmm. I can only be correct for myself. And then I do big picture view. And I feel like the human design has really, really given me the tools to do that. And what I'm noticing now and I've spoken about this before, but in terms of recognizing the distinct frequency of my inner authority, because you can have many people that are splenic, but yes. to put everybody in the same box, like it's so important. And this is something that I, with all of my clients, I tell them, you're going to read all kinds of things about whatever your authority is, but your own ability to distinct, distinctly discern correctness for you, mm -hmm. nobody can tell you that. Nobody. Yeah. And so for me, it's been such a trip to see that when it's no, my mind can be going 5,000 miles an hour and telling me all kinds of things, but my body does not move. Yes. It doesn't move. It just doesn't. And so I, I, I'm able to honor that now in such a different way. All of the ways that I would cater to the pressures, having to act. People think just because you're splenic and you have the ability to be spontaneous, it does not always mean now at all. Yes, that's so true. A very important distinction. So yeah, I mean, this whole, this whole concept of of really being in alignment according to your unique inner authority, it is, there is nothing that can come close to, to that in this day and age. I mean, this is, from my perspective anyways, probably the ultimate cutting edge information. Yeah, it is. Game changer, game changer. Yes. I can't even tell you, I, there's no way even in words that I could describe how it has affected my uh, not only my own perception of the bonds in my life, but I mean, on, on every single level, the respect that I have now and the, my ability to, to navigate differently and also all of the ways in which that I would either blame myself, blame others, I'm able to have so much more of a I guess you could say an objective perspective. And it's not to say that people can't do crappy things. And it's not to say that people can't, uh, you know, behave in ways that absolutely just like <laughs> ups can, can get under my skin because I am the behavior police, <laughs> if you look at my design. I mean, I'm so sensitive to... Um, to behavior that really is not, um, how do I even say this? I mean, everything in my design is about having behavior that is really um, almost leading somebody towards a safer future. Human design, the tools of human design really help me to be able to do that, help others with that in my work. Yes. But again, it can be something that can either turn inwards or it can also be inappropriately wielded in my relationships mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I've been able to kind of take a step back and I'm not saying it's been easy but it's it has really dramatically uh just changed my whole perspective and my whole experience 
Yeah, that's exactly the the ex the experience I had. I, I started with uh, understanding better my connection with my kids, and that was a complete like before and after dramatic <laughs> change. And I think the other part is, like you said, a profound respect for the difference, for how the other is different than you are, and that just that tiny little adjustment <laughs> in the awareness it brings a lot of easiness and kind of flow in the connection that that really made it made a huge difference for me the very first video i think that i ever posted was the one that still to this day is my most popular it's uh the manifestor projector relationship the pu wow. push and pull pleasure and pain of the manifestor projector relationship and i don't know why i mean i, d I definitely grew up i grew up with three generators but outside of that i would say that i've had so many manifestors in my life and they have truly been my greatest teachers especially as a projector to really understand certain dynamics and to to be able to love just on a whole new level i started noticing that kind of well, I don't know if the right word is complicity, but there's something very special that happened between projectors and manifestors. And then I get to see it in my own household. When I'm not around, the energy is like. <laughs> and then I come in and then suddenly I can see how my sacral kind of start moving the things around and I'm like, oh, I'm not doing this on purpose. You guys do have fun. It's OK. <laughs> Yeah, but that's also something that I find has been such a game changer is that we broadcast what we broadcast. And in the pillars of my work, one of the biggest things is about through awareness of who we are and who we are not really learning how to manage our energy in ways that are self responsible. So you can't take back your sacral energy, but at the same time, Knowing who you are allows you to wield your energy in a way that only respects you, but also has the capacity to create ease in your relationships. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a key, you know, like what you just said, like taking responsibility for our own energy, not in the, not from being ashamed of or having to change something, which is the perspective I had before human design. Is all, it was all about transformation. Like there's something that I need to change about myself. It was always that the focus of the practices. And then after like getting to know better, my energy was more about accepting. It was more about, this is me. I can't help it. I don't do it on purpose. And it's actually not up to me to change that. But yeah, what we do is be correct for ourselves and wield our energy in the most responsible way. We're not always going to excel at that. Uh, are there times that I totally um, that I still wield my energy in ways that might be repellent to people who are not in the space to receive me? Absolutely. But it's for me, it's exciting now because it's a learning experience. It's like in some of my videos, I talk about having the elastic around the wrist and it's like the resistance factor. And it's like either a little tinge or it's like a snap or it's like, ouch, it really hurts. And so all of these things, it's like, it's almost like having this innate biofeedback with our environment that helps us get back into alignment. There's so many places that I used to blame the other. Well, why are they like this? Or if they weren't like this, then I wouldn't be feeling this way. And all, mm -hmm. honestly, it's it's a bit of a crock of shit because like I said, even though some people can have crappy behavior, when at the end of the day, it still will always come back to our own management of our individual energy. And through correctness, we will attract the correct experiences and people for our fulfillment, end of story. Yeah, what I get from you is this, like the key of taking responsibility. And that all, it goes all the way also with health because health ultimately is balance, right? My earth, my personality earth and my personality moon conjunct in gate three, line five in <sighs> detriment, which is the line of victimization in an undefined sacral. You know, oh. I can amplify that like crazy, but what I'm learning about this, not only does that ground me so, so amazingly, but 
I, I, you know, I have to say that there has been nothing that has taught me more in my own design. And, in, in, and I see how what I'm here to teach is getting unstuck, getting out of that place of being victimized. And even though things might not, things may seem chaotic and things may not be, you know, in place right now, but if you can just step back and just allow, that's what this is all about, that gate three, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so it's been really amazing. It's been really amazing to see that and this theme of victimization and how we can really end up being um, victimized, but completely unnecessarily. And here we have the tools to step out of that. So I'm, I just feel so grateful to be in a place where I've been given all that I've been given to help the people that are here to recognize me and invite me to help them with their life path. Yeah, and maybe a lot of people you don't even know <laughs> that you are helping anyhow. That's the thing. I've had some major lessons to show me that I'm really not here for the local people. I'm not here to try to get popular locally. I'm really here for strangers to find me in their own right timing. And that's why this YouTube channel has been such a such a gift because I just put it there, we'll leave it there. And it's not anything that's going to go stale. Whoever's meant to find me in the right timing will. So what, you know, what could there be that's better than that? Yes, yes. And it feels so true. Like what the, the way you do it is so Align. Like you are very open in terms of, well, here is where I am in my energies. And this is why I'm doing this right now, because my energies are here. So here it goes. And it's, it doesn't, you know, it's beautiful because it's not like planned or, you know, it's like, it, it just, yeah, it resonates a lot with me, with my way also, <laughs> like not being so, um, you know, rhythmic in a way, like every week or you know, three times a week, I, I pull out something. It's more like when you have the energy, which is, for me, it's been my understanding of my way, with my sacral energies, at least, when I have the energy. It's, it's really even funny that you said that in exactly the way that you said it, because one of the things I was contemplating possibly doing another video about in my gems from my human design experiment series was about the difference between um discipline and willpower like the discipline of the fifth line it's one of the from genetic continuity yes. um and somebody with an undefined heart center i'm not here to have willpower and yet it's like when i find what works splenically i might end up being very consistent with something i don't have gate five it's not coming from there but it's like understanding these nuances and like yes ah oh, it's like it just allows us to embrace ourselves at a, a completely new level. Yeah, well, with my son in gate 50, line five, that is the line of consistency. And the way that I see it is like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but there are certain things that definitely do need to be rebelled against and changed. So it yes. can be difficult with that. And 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 <laughs> gate 32 also getting really fixed uh, in certain ways. But mm -hmm. these tools have really helped me to be able to become aware of, of what works and what doesn't. Yeah, thank you, Melanie. It's been wonderful. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So is there any anything else like, like you want to say, like where people can find you, what you do? Well, I am actually in the midst of redoing my website, but it has been a prolonged activity because I have so much going on in my life. Like all of these things happen at once and I've kind of had to put it on the back burner, but I can still be found. It's not going to be changing anyways. It's my name, www.melaniehelpert.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm really not very active on social media. I would say if anything, most of my stuff would be on my Facebook professional page, uh, I did open an Instagram account. I've hardly ever been on there. I just don't have the bandwidth at this time. But YouTube is the best place for people who want to see my videos. I, yes. um, My whole mission with that is I had issues feeling like I was getting breadcrumbed a lot at the beginning. So I try to be generous with my content. I know that my videos are long. I know that people do not always have long attention spans. But look, 
they're there. So people can watch some, they can come back to it. They can listen to me on 1.5 times the speed, whatever they want to do. It's there for people to enjoy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I appreciate your content. It's actually great. And that's why I, I, I had the chance to just digest some of the things. And and I found it, like I say, like very generous, like you, you really explain things. You go, I mean, you don't hold back anything. It's just like whatever is present is just flowing through you. Right now that there's so much distortion also out there around the system and so many people speaking about human design. You want to say something about that? <laughs> I'm a fifth line, so I have no idea where my life will take me in terms of my heresy. I did a lot of exploring outside of the traditional human design uh, lineage, I guess you could say, but I ended up really gravitating to the original source material. Yes. And look, I believe that there's really somebody for everyone and it could be so easy for me to slam all of these pop human design people. I do not have an affinity at all with any of that. And yet at the same time, who am I, who am I, who am I to, it's like, there's going to be people that for whatever reason need to be working with those people. It's not taking anything away from me. And I just feel like having this mentality that, not even a mentality, but just having the awareness that as a 5-1, I am a stranger of consequence with a very, very powerful geometry. And the people that are meant to cross my path, there is not even a, a stick that could beat these people away. So <laughs> instead of wasting my energy, getting super mad and up in arms about these people online, it's just like, you do you, I'll do me. And I trust that the people that are meant for me are going to come to me. And that's that. When you look at the world and you look at all of these homogenized ways that you're supposed to be doing business, it is not comfortable for a fifth line. I'm not here to be some kind of fourth line, fuzzy, buzzy uh, friends with everybody up in everybody's grill all the time with my content and doing things so that I'm creating these connections. And no, it's really not that. So wow. it's been a huge relief to me. I, like I had this, 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 Thing that came to me in working with one of my 5-1 colleagues at one point where it just apparently it wasn't an original idea which I found out in retrospect but with my open head and undefined Ajna I laughed at the irony of that but I had I thought that I had come up with this term like transcending the algorithm that as fifth lines we transcend the algorithm because it's not about needing to be always in people's faces <laughs> so my ability to approach business in a way that feels correct to me, even if it flies in the face of what all of these gurus say you need to do to be popular, screw that. For me, it's not about being famous. It's not about being popular. I don't want a community. I just want to be able to express myself, to be able to universalize my foundation in a way that feels aligned with who I am. And whoever is on board with that and whoever says, hey, please, can you like work with me? Amazing. That's what I'm down with. Powerful. Really powerful. Thank you for saying that. Well, Melanie, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for, for all you do for your perspective. I really value your perspective. And yeah, I don't know if you want to say anything else to the people that is being listening this. The space is yours. <laughs> Well, I always trust that if people tune in, it's because there's a piece of what we talked about that they needed to hear on exactly the day that they chose to listen. So I hope that it brings your audience something of value. And it has been a real pleasure to be on with you. Like, I could geek out about this stuff all the time. So to geek out with somebody where it's just so easy and, and, and just fulfilling, it's my everything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melanie. I mean, everything about human, everything about what it is for us to be on this plane, everything about our development, everything about our movement has brought us to this time and this place. In order to be able to fulfill uniqueness. This is what uniqueness is all about. Be your own authority. Live your design. Find your own trajectory. It's about
about where you are. Leave your mind behind. That's what Ross says. Ross says. Ross says what Ross says. Ross says. Because where you are, you are there all alone. Ross says. Ross said what Ross said. Ross said. Knowing our place is transcendence itself and it's the holiest thing that you can experience in this life.